This arrangement shows the simplest way that you can use the laser detector to detect trains or other objects. Uh, the laser is over here and you can see it quite clearly on this piece of paper or on my finger as I block it. The circuit has two transistors, an LED and a relay, a few resistors, and when the beam is broken, the relay is triggered and the LED is also illuminated to show you that the, uh, the beam has been broken. This laser can be separated from the phototransistor that's here by a distance literally of hundreds of feet if you run a long enough wire to it and can be used uh, uh, very effectively at great distance. As it is now, the laser is quite visible. We'll show a way to make that laser much less visible in a subsequent video. This time the transistor circuit has been replaced with a circuit that uses a pickaxe microcontroller that you can see here. Here's the pickaxe. There are connections for the phototransistor and the laser, a relay, a voltage regulator, and a few other components. There's also a potentiometer that we'll take a look at in a few minutes. In this circuit, we're using a mirror, which is down here, to reflect the laser beam. And you can see here's the laser, and if I block it, I activate the relay, and here again, if I block it over by the phototransistor, I activate the relay. So the, the laser beam is going from here to the mirror and back. The advantage of this, of course, is you could put all of this on one side of the track, put the mirror on the other, or at some distance, and you would be able to detect whatever is passing by. There's also a switch on this that allows a, a, you do a rather neat trick. You'll notice that the laser is quite visible on this piece of paper. I'll hold it there for a minute. If I push this button, I think you'll notice that the laser beam just about disappears. Let me do that a little bit closer to the laser. Almost gone and back to brightness. And what you do with that is you leave the laser on at full brightness to align it. Then once it's aligned, you can turn the laser beam pulses on so that it only pulses for a very short period of time. It still works perfectly, as you can see, but you can barely see that uh, laser beam. Now, if I darken the room, I guess you can see it a little bit there on that piece of paper if I darken it a bit, but it is still much, much less visible than it was before. That's the advantage of using the microcontroller. This circuit is very similar to the one with the pickaxe that we just saw, the pickaxe and the mirror. Uh, in this case, though, we're using a PIC microcontroller, which is a microcontroller that's related to the pickaxe, but uh, that we can program uh, to operate at a much higher speed. And that has an interesting advantage. Here again, we have the laser here. I'll block it with my finger. You can see that laser beam quite clearly. The phototransistor is down here, and I surrounded it with a piece of white paper so that it's easier to align. And it's a direct connection between the two. If I block it, it activates the relay. Now, if I press the same button that I was using on the pickaxe circuit, you'll see the laser beam on the far end pretty much disappears, and it still operates. But if I hold that piece of paper right in front of the laser, I don't think you can see that beam much of it all, just a little bit. The, the reason for that is that the PIC microcontroller can pulse the laser beam much, uh, at a much higher rate, uh, leaving it on for a much smaller period of time while still detecting it than the pickaxe. So that makes that beam just about invisible, quite an advantage. This time we're using the PIC processor again, and there's a direct uh, beam between the laser and the phototransistor that's down here. Again, you can see the beam quite clearly. But this time we've added a potentiometer, also called a pot, to the circuit. And you'll notice as I turn the pot, you can see the laser beam on the piece of paper. As I turn it clockwise, the beam begins to become dimmer and dimmer and dimmer until it just about disappears. But again, it still works. What we're doing here is adjusting the pulse rate and you can see from brightest, which is real nice for aiming, down to minimal, which is very good for uh, detecting without being noticed. Again, this is being done with a PIC microcontroller. It can also be done with the PIC axe and the Arduino, but with the PIC, it seems to work best. It seems to give you the fastest pulses and the least visible of the laser beams. 
This circuit is using an Arduino Uno that has a uh, prototyping board uh, connected to the top of it. The Arduino is down here and the prototype on top. But again, the same components. There's a relay, a potentiometer as we had with the, uh, the PIC we looked at a few moments ago, and a few um, resistors and a transistor. One uh, connection to the photo transistor and one connection over here to the laser. If we put the uh, little piece of paper in front so that you can see the laser better, you'll see it flickering a little bit. And if I turn the potentiometer just as we had with the, the pick, you'll see that uh, laser getting a little dimmer. It's actually flickering much more clearly with the Arduino than with the, uh, the pick. And again, if I turn it all the way, it all but disappears, but the detector still works rather well.